All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Listen to this. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 101st episode of the Drinking Partners Podcast. Yes, there are no athletes who wore 101, so we'll start over at one. My favorite athlete that wore number one, Tracy McGrady, because he had a lazy eye, but he could shoot his ass off, and I never (laughs) understood it. And I think somehow there's a metaphor for this podcast. Like, we (laughs) we have a lazy eye, but we still sound good. I don't know. Shout out to T-Mac. He wore this big ass suit on the sideline once. That was funny. Yeah. I don't know. I am happily like hosting people. tandem Ed Bailey. I am joined as always with my co host Dave Bracey. Say what up to the people. What's good with you people? Uh, we are drinking partners. And if you're looking for us, you can find us on Instagram. <laughs> right after one on one. We did a hundred now on one on one. He totally forgets the lineup. Oh man, 101 episodes. Um <laughs> we are drinking partners. And if you're looking for us, you can find us at EpicastNetwork.com slash PartnersPod. You can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at PartnersPod. You can find us on Google Play. <laughs> well, iTunes, Stitcher, Lipsyn, and Google Play. We are Googleable. Under Drinking Partners. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dave Brace for almost showing up. Uh, this is a two of three. So this is we're, the, we're in the middle. The we're sandwiched in between recording two other podcasts. Day has gone off and done some illicit things. <laughs> I was uh, sitting in here watching my daughter paint nothing while he did it. So that makes my day feel even much more like shit. But yes, we are here and excited. Thank you all for, for, for listening, man. It's great to be on episode 101. That's crazy. The last episode that you heard was us down at Pittsburgh Playwrights Theater recording our 100th episode. Shout out to them. Shout out to everyone who came. Apis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's crazy because <laughs> we... We Rock recorded it, and then we didn't drop it, and now, yeah, you're listening to it at home, and we're like a whole month separated, but yeah, <laughs> but thank you, everybody that made that happen, man. Uh, you know, all the all the sponsors, Bloom Brew, Shoe Brew. Uh, I think I named the rest of them. <laughs> Word. The we had uh, T-Robe doing comedy. Yeah. Dom, we had uh, Dom John Shuck. Fetterman, Baron Batch, Rick Seaback yeah. in there as guests, Dom Shuck. Uh, on the ones and twos. Is he on ones and twos? He's not on ones and twos because he just had one. There's no turntables. Why am I even asking? <laughs> Dom just making it feel like a real event. True. That's what he should put on his cards. I'll make your shit feel like a real event. Yeah. Somehow yeah. make that rhyme. He so, adds yeah. the professionalism. Shout know? out to everyone who came, supported, everyone who's been listening. We are here. We are drinking. Yeah. This wow. is awesome. Um, They've torn the wall down here at uh, Work Hard. So we're just looking into this other room with a mop. So that, <laughs> yeah, we're, de- we're definitely under renovation out here. <laughs> yeah, so it, <laughs> I, I want to like because we're, we're there's a green screen. Like I want Buzzy to like green screen us. Like <laughs> we should have sat in there and done the podcast, and it would be like we floating on a spaceship. Or yeah, some we could have done podcast. it in Hawaii or something. We could have been homeboys in outer space, <laughs> but we funnier. Gotta- we got to make that happen, man. We got to do something before this shit like gets finished. Before like they start renting that space. Before, <laughs> before us doing it for free is an inconvenience yeah. to others. We need to get in there. Before a schedule happens. Um, yeah, uh, 101 episodes, man. Um, love all the support. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest, biggest supporters that we've had uh, on this podcast uh, is in the room today. In the room. He actually... Uh, they brewed a special beer for us for our 100th episode. Oh, that hundo. I've been hearing about that hundo for a month straight. I've been hit up about where can I find hundo. Yeah. And here's why. Because it's a cognac beer, man. You it got to have cognac in your life. It tastes like the podcast, man. I don't want to. Like the to, first episode. I want to pause that because <laughs> that doesn't sound right <laughs> for it's, me to go sign. It's not like you're <laughs> drinking us. <laughs> but... <laughs> but you gotta drink it. Up. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that up, day. Uh, but it's delicious. Once we got on the other side of 100, we got weird. Apparently, <laughs> that's what happens. We our catalog got too strong. We don't went Kanye on y'all. We don't went totally left field. But no, on a serious note, man, this gentleman he's been on like four or five podcasts. Always been a supporter from the beginning. Like I said, he brewed the hundo. 
which he'll tell you where to find it because you got to get it before they out. It's a phenomenal beer. Uh, we got Tom from Full Pint in the building. Say what up to the people. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, he don't really Happy do. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, you've heard that voice before. Yeah. But he came along with a friend. Yeah. Um, we need to get you a chair, man. Like, yeah, we got to get you, get you like, you got to, you're like the third drinking part. We're the drinking trio. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm honored. I'm honored. People would fuck that up though. Like if we were drinking trio, they call us the drinking triplets because nobody, <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets drinking partners right. It's no, like, we're drinking buddies. Dr- yeah, drinking brothers. <laughs> yeah, drinking pa- <laughs> well, you know the brothers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not brothers. It's brothers. <laughs> it's the only time uh, when you drop the uh, the er and add an a. It's yeah. kind of racist. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we got Tom in the building. He brought his friend Chris Bowles, uh, musician, slash we won't mention your day job. <laughs> Say what up to the people. <laughs> what up? Living. Okay, he's going to be the day bracy of the guests. So we got yeah. Tom, who's the vet. He's me. Chris is, uh, <laughs> Chris is day. Yeah, we'll, we'll be the inebriated they'll, they'll battle on the whose voice is uh, deepest. <laughs> or me and Tom try to do what something positive. What episode are we on? We, uh, yeah, it's like, I'll talk we said 101 like 101 times already. That's a great number of Dalmatians. There I didn't is. want to do Dalmatians. That's all I was going for. That's the only reason. I, I wanted to totally not have the term Dalmatian mentioned in this episode. Take a drink every time someone says Dalmatians. <laughs> Truth. I feel like Dalmatians are the dog representative of this country. It's just all white with black spots. <laughs> Get that sponsor. <laughs> that's a manufactured animal. <laughs> that's, you know, hey, we doing that shit on purpose. So, Tom. Tell us about the hundo, man. Like, tell us what it really is, because I keep saying cognac beer, and that's cognac. not what it is. Well, but I'm just so happy that you decided to allow us to put cognac into the craft oh. industry somehow. Like, first off, thanks you for thinking of us. Number one, I that, I really appreciate you guys coming down to the bur- the pub, talking to us, getting ideas. See, that's fun. I hate shooting emails back and forth. Like, yeah, that's hey, whack. what do you feel like doing? Mm. And then. 17 emails later, you're yeah. done. Yeah, I hate emails, man. Just talk Fine. to me face to face. Let's no. get this yeah, done. Yeah, I think once you get a hour. certain level of established mm. back and forth with someone, we can drop the email. Like, yeah. I know you too well <laughs> to be waiting on you to check your email. Yeah. I need to hit you direct. It goes to weird places and shit. Like, you know, I like I juggle a bunch of email accounts and they might uh. go to spam or into some weird shit. Like, let's just sit down for a minute, you know? I had a great time. Yeah. So it's a double red. Don't ask me what uh, double red double is a funny term in like the beer industry. Double imperial, they're kind of similar terms. Mm. Both you know seven and a half plus percent beers, so we're talking a bulkier, bigger red ale. Uh, but what we did is we took oak chips and we soaked cognac or soaked the oak chips in cognac and we tossed those in the fermenter, mm. and the rest is history. <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 smooth. It's uh, it's a little heavier, you know, like the podcast. Yeah, well, I'm smooth and your voice is heavy, so I guess that's <laughs> like the podcast. So when when making a uh, what is it, double red or yeah, or I keep, I'm gonna keep calling it cognac beer because that makes me feel like I have something to do with it. <laughs> like, what are you shooting for with taste with that? Because oh. it's not a beer, it's not a type that I've heard of before. Like, what are you trying to get with taste? Yeah, and, you definitely want to balance out. Like the the booziness usually tends to balance out better with malt. Mm. Like you don't want to talk. Like you never really see a lot of imperial wheats. You never see a lot of you know um, imperial browns. Those right, types of right. things. The, I mean those those beers. I don't really think that they lend well to being big and malty. Yeah. Um. So we we're kind of thinking red, kind of like a little bit darker, a little bit. That's something that would be able to support mm. having that. I don't want to say abrasive because that's the wrong word. But dis- maybe distinctive mm. flavor in there. Something that you want to be like, yeah, that helps to balance the, to, all that to out. To cut it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that's because with cognac, like, uh, uh, those, you know, uh, the ladies over at Cake, they made that uh, that henny ice cream. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was perfect. Because, oh, like, good. yeah, I mean, it was, it was all the flavor of henny without any of the bite, you know. Um, and I think that you guys did a good job with the beer was taking that cognac, like the essence of cognac and cutting it with the red ale yeah. and also keeping it heavy. And it was, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. I definitely want to drink this out of a square glass, <laughs> 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 but I'd also be weird for doing it. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I kept thinking, I'm like, all right, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Cause you know, the more like, cognac is it. 
it's kind of a new frontier. I've never heard anybody do. I mean, granted, there's probably hundreds of beers that have been made with cognac, but I kept thinking, like, this is new. This is exciting. I haven't gone to I've a bar. I've never heard in, of a cognac. Yeah, band. And I'm yeah. new to the scene, but <laughs> yeah, so am I. I've yeah, heard brandy I mean, before. Like people use like brandy barrels and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but I wouldn't put it past someone to do cognac, do you know, make up something that's not even barrel aged, and then like, oh, this was aged in a vodka barrel. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta meet a certain type of person to be like, yo, I want cognac in my beer. Like, <laughs> you gotta be really into cognac to be like, listen, <laughs> I need you to make a beer with that, whatever that. <laughs> Whatever that Hennessy is, I want it in that beer. I'm just glad you didn't come out and be like, yo, I want oysters in this beer. Yeah. I want like uh <laughs> Nah, we we were cognac. Some type of root <laughs> or Lobster. like whatever. I don't I, I'm just glad it was something that was unique, progressive, accessible, something that people wouldn't be like, ugh, oysters. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know, and and that's kinda like with you know, with with the henny in the podcast or whatever, like we have we talk to a lot of people and, you know, that's what they drink. Like, you know, um, yeah, oysters. We had that raging. No, it was. We've had weird. Pearl was, necklace. Uh, the pearl necklace. Yeah. That didn't get a thumbs up. on the Very podcast. unique yeah, flavor profile. Yeah. You got to really kind of be into it. It's yeah, not I think like everybody you, beer. Yeah. When you, sir, I don't understand certain beers just because I don't understand how you think someone's going to drink a full beer of this. Like when we have <laughs> tastings and things, I can yeah, understand yeah. getting a sample of like a jalapeno chive beer. Yeah. All right, cool. I can yeah. drink a small sample of that. But am it's I gonna a big drink potato beer? Right? Yeah, like am I gonna <laughs> drink like twelve fluid ounces of yeah, that? I don't like know. Ranch beer, and it's like I'm not gonna have a sixer of that. Yeah, what I'm mean? not gonna sit at the bar and just be pounding knees while I'm watching <laughs> college football. Like this is weird as fuck. But to each his own. So thank you for making that wonderful beer. Thank you for My letting pleasure. us be a part yeah. of it, man. I think that's what happens. When two small businesses put their heads together and decide to get fucked up. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, think, I think you started a trend. You know what I mean, like, how people ever resp- be the first? Count us in for 200, by the way. Seriously. Yeah. How have people responded to the Hundo? Honestly, it's been like everybody I tell, I, I like, try to get that picture in their mind. I'm like, this is what it's like. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. It tastes really good. And, and I can't get anyone to pull the trigger. I got one bar to pull the trigger on it recently. Up in Pine, of all places. He's mm. like, I need that beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I put it on his order right away. I'm like, yeah. ain't, ain't going to let him change his mind a few minutes later. I'm like, sorry, dude. It's on the truck. Listen, yeah. man, you need to go to Homewood. Go to Compton. Go to any place <laughs> where there's a high volume of African Americans. Yeah. Like, look. We have cognac in beer. Yeah. You need to put mm-hmm. that on tap. Yeah, that Tell is me. a that is an automatic. When I took it back home, they were like, What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me get some of that. And yeah, you good. got some folks in Cleveland who are waiting for it. Oh, we gotta get representation out in Ohio. I can't get people to call me back. We had representation. We lost it. Trying to get it back. They're like, Oh, let's wait until after the World Series. Let's wait until after Thanksgiving. This year might not be so good. And yeah. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Give us a chance. Yeah, that's I mean, that's how it is. I mean, even in 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 our our, our industry, I mean, trying to like reach out and, oh, and yeah, break the, that. The club, the people who book the club, they always want you to email them in three months and yeah. get me back mm. after this. We're booked <laughs> up. And it's like, you why why three months from now? Would you gonna remember me? You're gonna remember this email? <laughs> You'll be like, Oh, that's the guy who asked about doing a weekend with Dale Hewlett. <laughs> Yeah, I owe him this. Yeah, I, feel, I, I feel an obligation. <laughs> yeah, like that's not gonna happen. Mm. Yeah. And we were saying that about the emails before. It's like that's the reason why when I try to get business for Full Pine, I go. I'm like, yeah, let's set a date. I want to see you in person. You have yeah. to because emails are so impersonal. They don't know yeah. who we are, what we are. They don't know what the beer tastes like. They don't know anything about us. It's like save that date. Don't email me back. Yeah. I hate hearing that. Yeah, I feel like when you send Authentic. an email, you're lumped into a group of people. Mm-hmm. Automatically, you're yeah. already classified, and, yeah. and that has nothing to do with the product you bring it to the table. It's just how we remember you. Yeah, I mean, face to face interactions. I mean, there's something to be said about that. I mean, um, you know, that's why interviews are so important because you get to sit down with somebody and actually like have a you know discussion as opposed to you know blank you know correspondences, you know, black and white. So 
Mm-hmm. Now we have an interview to do here because Tom, you brought you brought a guest with you this time. Like you're <laughs> so comfortable. Tom's I'm so nice. comfortable. He's rigging people. Yeah. It's like yo, I'm gonna come through and I got my man. I kicked my shoes off it when I came hard. in here. I'm like, let's do this. And I got he brought his man's Chris Bowles. True. So what up? Let and the he, people and know he about a, you. A beer for it. Well, you gotta. Well, if you time and you show up without beer, I'm gonna feel the type of way. But like, so hold on. What did I do to you? <laughs> we beefing? Like <laughs> you are Mr. Beer. Like <laughs> if anything, I should get tipsy with you sitting in my car. Like. That's that's, <laughs> That's right. But don't drink it dry. So, Chris, uh, let the people know about yourself. How'd you get, get oh, started? Yeah, for sure. So that Hondo, real quick, that's double red. That's okay. two times the red. I'm going to pop one live right now. Word. We're going to pop it live. Oh, wait. I haven't seen the bottle. It's, it's a different bottle. <laughs> I thought we could. No, notice, I notice. Faked it. I faked it. I grabbed that beer. <laughs> ah, you fucking. That's not how you introduce yourself to the people, man. I mean, it was. That's the worst. Fucked. Say what up to the people recorded ever. One hundred and one. <laughs> they would that never say what know. up to the people. One hundred and one on one hundred and one. You misled yeah, me yeah, on you. my own podcast. I was great, like, wait, I haven't great seen first the bottle. Impression. Great the first impression. Um. So you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys you guys are here on a collaboration right? straight up yeah it's called living color yeah so what i do we did the art crawl mm-hmm. tom full pint they were cool enough to sponsor it so mm-hmm. they gave us a ton of free full pint we gave it out it was killer and then we were like why not work more so they made us this beer and it's uh every dollar of every pour every bar that has it goes to red fishbowl this art music company i work for they take local artists, local musicians, you know, they're going to fund band tours, mm. send bands to Chicago, Nashville, Knoxville, that's our main connections. Uh, you know, the local art, supplies, band recording, give people shirts, all that kind of stuff. Do it out there, just give it to the community. Cycle around, just pay, photographers, hire rates, everybody. So, the way it works is I'm going to pop this case live. This is real. We brought visual this aids is not, to the podcast. <laughs> I promise this is real. This I want is you not to know, Chris, you confuse me as a human being. I don't know. I don't think you're real. Like, <laughs> I don't know if it's translating to the people. He's, he kind of comes in. You ever see Chippendale Rescue Rangers? He looks like one of them Ooh. a little bit. Fakes me out with he the does. beer, but he has like a suitcase or he something does that have the could bomber be on. good. It's, it's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. I don't know what's it. about to happen, man. I'm trying to trust you. And I'm, I'm about get the to glasses. Get <laughs> You're gonna get some free <laughs> shit right now. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna reveal. Like, boom, boom. Chris is Off. here now. Ooh. All right, we're popping he's, it. He's popping it. Ooh, so shit. what we got going on? The artist paints the tap handle. The nigga real flashy, right? Okay. So then once we tap the beer at the bar, that artist gets a solo show. They put up their art, we pair it with the DJ, we play it with this, that, music, and we have an opening for it. And then, you know, that money goes towards paying the artist. So different artists, paying. it'll all be living color, but all of your tap hands. All, yeah, there. yeah. This is Camo. He's going to be at the sense. gold mark on uh, February 16th, Thursday for him. His art will be up. will be DJs, all that. And it's all about different aesthetic. Okay. We got Sean Coffey at the Commoner, right? Why you get the little tap handle? His, well, his they, sponsorship package was... <laughs> no, he did, he did <laughs> industry he paid, as well. He paid for the silver package. <laughs> <laughs> the premium. The premium. <laughs> uh, they gave us their own tap handle. You know, it's it's different out there. Like, some people are like, we want a pig oh, no, on I'm ours. Just, just, we got to have a pig on ours, because why was that? Bacon. Bacon. It's a ba- mm. That makes sense. Well, who, bacon whose is that? Uh, some place down in Washington. Uh, bacon bourbon beer it's pretty legit down there Ooh, bacon bourbon beer. What? wow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop, wow. stop drilling you hit oil <laughs> so, as a, so for people yeah. who are a little confused <laughs> listening basically yeah, yeah, yeah. um they've collaborated on a beer and proceeds from that beer go back into supporting small business more or less and they're like local people. art local music artists community, well, we, we, all that yeah. we consider local artists small businesses yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, why, yeah, yeah. That, that's the huge thing here so I mean, this is this is an example of small business giving back, I and mean, this this is why you need to support local and support small business because yeah. those connections lead to money for that community. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if you could you could you can go 
with the, the larger companies and shit like that, but they're not going to do this. Yeah, it's, it's microeconomics. Yeah, they're not going to do this. Now, who's Rainbow uh, Teletubby Joan is that? <laughs> that one? Yeah, Tinky Winky. <laughs> That's Elisa Jacobson. Like I said, it's all different styles, so obviously. That's not it. I, I, I like the, I, I like so, the handle. So, you know, different it, kind of jam yeah, music, awesome. right? DJ music. This is a spray paint artist. They all have different styles, so it's going to be different releases. You know, try to hit every genre. Yeah, no. Nah. I equally. think all of the handles look dope, and I don't want you to confuse my jokes on the handle with me. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a black thing. Like we, yeah. black people, we make fun of the shit we like. Like you walk in, you got uh, on a fly outfit, on we everything. start ripping on you immediately. <laughs> Who is fucking Don Cornelius looking at that? Came to Thanksgiving. Old this. Steve Harvey looking mom. <laughs> yeah, black yeah, yeah, <laughs> people like your shit. We immediately yeah, start we, riding. Oh, yeah. we think he poop. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't know how to say nice things, so we yeah. give you backhanded yeah. compliments. We. Compare you to someone who's rich. So it's like if I'm only nice to you, I don't you. You don't know if I'm really like. Yeah, you or I don't not. fuck with you. Yeah. If, I'm only, sure. if I'm only nice to you, it's because you deal with my job. <laughs> so, so tell us more about Red Fishbowl, man. Oh, for sure. So it started about I want to say five years ago now, real organically. I just took my buddy's art. I wanted mm. to put it up. We put it in Delaney's coffee shop. And then people really took attention to it. They bought it. Other artists are like, hey, what do I got to do to get my stuff on the I just put it up. And then from that, it just snowballed, accumulated into like, you know, we're like, let's make a show out of it. So we started getting 40 visual artists, three bands, people live painting outside, uh, stuff, Edison, new community, uh, comedy, in between sets, performers, all that. So pretty much everyone does a little bit of legwork. It's all about community. Bring people together. So you got different networks, different friend groups coming from the band, different artists, different styles, you know, and it's all over. So it gets this huge group of people together, and then you switch them out, and you rotate them in, kind of like a keg or a beer, right? (laughs) So then you get new people coming in, people who've been last one know what it's about, and they keep showing up, and it just keeps growing and growing. We've been doing it for five years. Great. So the Art Crawl is one of our biggest events every year, and I would love what you were saying every local business supporting local business, because that's what it's about, you know? The art call is all, like, we focus local, like, threads, you know, glass gone wild. We had little art things all up and down from 9th to 26th. Everyone supporting each other. Coffee, tattoo shops, boutiques. This is Southside. Clothing shops. Yeah, it's Southside. But we do it all over, like, Lawrenceville. Uh, We've done something in every major borough in the city. And now, thanks to Tom, you know, they loved it. They were awesome. We're like, let's collaborate. Let's do this. And that's good for everyone. The bar gets new clientele. The artist gets to show their work. Right, people are represented. The Absolutely. band gets in there, and everyone gets new exposure. We've done three events so far, and each one has had 150 plus. Yeah, I, I think mean, what, pulling people nice. in. Twenty bars pre-ordered it about maybe nice. more. Nice. So that's a lot of fucking work for me. <laughs> <'Cause we've got laughs> trying to keep up with them tap one. handles. <laughs> and it's the same, like you know, buy venue like some of like Pine Tom Pen. That's smaller, so it's gonna be like acoustic kind of stuff. Porch, right. that's fancy, right? Gold mark, that's DJs. That's their thing, you know. So each one has its own style, and we pair the artists with that. So it's not, you know, no favoritism. You know what I mean? Every genre is respected and represented. So what? Wait. Yeah, what genre of music do you play? Oh, me personally. Yeah. Uh, I'm in two bands, so it's more like, like psychedelic. Psychedelic? So what bar is where's the psychs? I want to go uh, to the psychedelic James, bar. James Street Gastro Pub, you know, the Rex Theater, really? like places that, that do that shit. Yeah, up and downstairs. James Street's into the psychedelic thing. Um, I've only yeah, been to yeah. jazz concerts there. But, I can no, see where you can do that is it. totally their thing. It's like jazz, but if, like, if I'm doing something, I'm like, this is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have established sound. This is, this is what's up. So I want to see the psychedelic... Uh, bar handle when you get it for sure for sure we got we do we have that on there he handed you the phone there's already i want to say this is the second batch going out yeah we'll post we'll we'll, we'll post it on on our uh, various dips and we talk about visual things on the the auditory (laughs) medium well you guys got everything you got audio visual you got liquor yeah what else could you ask we got got my hands in everything yeah i'm out here trying to be the plug well, it's the internet, so you know if you're listening, uh, if if you're new to the cast, if you came um, to us uh, by other means, like I said, we are on Facebook and Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, talk to us, and uh, you can actually see all of these things that are happening. And uh, we will also link you to uh, to to these websites. Um, can you tell us about this beer, though, Tom? It's an Imperial IPA, eight percent, hundred plus IBU, Simcoe hops, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, 
as uh, as Chris so eloquently says, it's uh, cr- crushable, <laughs> crushable <laughs> eight percent. Tom, Tom knows it's a zero. crushable eight. Eight so, take. Very crushable. That's such a, a man logic. Yeah, no, it was like Crushable he knows the beer. Eight. I don't know anything about. Bourbon. No, no, he he says it perfectly because it's so easy to drink at eight yeah. at eight percent. Yeah, I'm already halfway through. Yeah, I was yeah just... that, that's what I was saying. I was like, all right, this is what we want to do. We want to make an IPA mm-hmm. high percent as possible, not a fucking meal. Mm. Tastes better than Yingling, as light as possible, and you can fucking slam it. Yeah, right. Okay, no, eight percent is a woman. like a eight <laughs> percent is a perfect. It it's like the 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 dangerous level. Yeah. I'm so ruining that session thing for you. You're, yeah. I'm pulling you away from that. <laughs> that it's because it's a dangerous eight. level. So like it's not like heavy, like a ten. You know what I mean, even too multi. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's also like you get four of them and you're like, Nyeh. we needed a beer <laughs> yeah. that was able to support this. I'm not going to go off and say, hey, here's a four percent beer. We want charge like this much money, and then you're going to charge your customers this much money on top of that. Mm-hmm. Ain't going to happen. Yeah. You got to have a beer that has kind of like a little bit of a, a little oomph, a little bit of a, you know, I don't high gravity is basically where I'm trying to yeah, get. It, yeah. It's high gravity <laughs> enough that people are like, yeah, I, I feel okay spending an extra buck. Because it's eight percent. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's gonna yeah. get you there. Yeah, uh, a crushable eight. It's it's a crushable eight. Now, everybody like needs that. a crushable like eight in their life. Yeah. We've I, all had crushable eights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all. Yeah, you know I mean, like you be uh, out, you texting, you don't see your favorite beer on tap, you go to that crushable eight. Yeah. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you go out. That you're Hundo eight point three. Can't pull the chick at the bar. You text that crushable. <laughs> <laughs> if, she, if, if she's an eight, you won. Yeah. Like, I've had crushable that's a, four or five. That's a winner, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've had yeah. a super crushable six. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have a problem uh, 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 going in and getting you know like a four or five. It just. You know, for the money or whatever. You're not it, drinking it, at that point. Yeah, it's just like mm. eh, get a I'm, ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> get yeah, a, like a, if I'm mowing going. the lawn, I'll have a session. Yeah, you know I mean, swimming. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm swimming, I'll have a five. <laughs> hey, find find your beach. You know, have a Corona. Fuck yeah, have a land shark. That's find why your they beach. have that. Yeah, I'm on a beach with a with a twelve because I know I'm not getting in the water. <laughs> yeah. If I'm on the beach, True. I'm just trying to deal with the sun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm usually under a shade. Uh, I don't do the just raw in the sun. No, I'm covered yeah, head I'm to like, toe. I got the towel over my head, towel on my leg. I'm like, I don't want to be yeah. here. You put like just shit on the tip of your nose. I'm, I'm too pa- you, I'm too pale for the are sun. You tip of the nose, uh, sunblock. <laughs> no, how come they never rub the sunblock all the way in on the tip of the nose? Why is it always sitting looking like a Hershey's kiss on the <laughs> right tip of your nose? I don't understand that. I, I don't use sunblock. So I, I like, like the breathe the, the breathe right strips. <laughs> yeah, like, I, it's yeah. Crazy. No, I can't handle the sun. I can't. If I'm drinking, it's even worse because then I get dehydrated. Yeah, I I'm hate sweating. It's a sweating. dangerous Fuck game. That shit. Whiskey on the beach is a dangerous yeah. game. I have lost that game. Yeah, you no, I, I've, I've, I've burnt. <laughs> So like I'm too light for the fuck like I I like nah I I'm burnt not, too but yeah. only only outside of the United States I remember <laughs> sunburn Australia in the, hole in the ozone I had to go to the Caribbean to get sunburned I didn't know what the fuck was happening to me either Ain't I that was the so weirdest confused. fucking experience I man? thought my nose was falling off I was like, this is what happened to Michael oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they attacked the base why of me, your nose. Lord? Why me? <laughs> I thought I listen. I had a lot of reasons for why me. Like oh, I've wow. lived such a shitty life that I don't ask why me. I just <laughs> point to things that this may be karma for, and yeah. then I eliminate that. Like all right, I paid yeah. that back. Yeah, karma no, I, is like Newtonian, man. It just it's it's science. Yeah, it, I, yeah. I went thirty two years without ever knowing what a burn felt like from the sun. It <laughs> that's the, had been my relationship with that star. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Never get it. <laughs> now it's the worst. So how did you two hook up? Uh, Literally from the art crawl, they sponsored it. Okay. And then from that, that was such a hit that like we just hit it off. And it turns out, like Delaney's, that's why I met so many people through there. I can't say enough good things about them. They let us use the space. Great you know, coffee. All about it. Great coffee. Phenomenal coffee. Um, and he ended up doing all of his work there all the time. And we bumped into each other after the event. It's true. Uh, this guy right here, Sean Coffee. Made of not spelled the same. Ain't coffee. spelled the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 Why? Sean he's, he's got Sean Coffee Conrad. Yeah, blah blah. <laughs> but uh, he made a full pint sign that they ended up wanting because it was awesome. He does a bunch of metal work and like signs for local businesses around that. So we ended up making a bunch of button bottle openers and whatnot. 
and you know they're magnets so like you know little thing for local businesses like if we made one for like you guys it would be out there you take it and then they come it's something to like you know you get something if you come here or like you go you get a drink token at full pint and then you rack up a tab and everyone wins and the person gets a free drink so working with the music community, yeah. how, how do you uh, how do you view the craft community? Because it seems like a lot more inclusive on the craft side. Music, I feel like there's a little bit more cattiness because um, I guess you're competing for gigs and things like that. But they they seem to work super together with craft. What's your experience dealing with both the music industry and then kind of now partnering with the craft there industry? Is the, yeah, there's a lot. He took I'm his glasses glad you off that up, for this it's response. Getting real. Like, it's getting got serious. Ser- like, no, and he didn't just take them off. He took them off and flipped them. Like, I sort of fuck I'm here. Yeah, I'm glad no. you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting. It is. It is. I have, I'm so glad you brought that because I've seen this shit he fail time and time again over and over. Like when it started in Bloomfield, when it started here. What always drove it apart was pretentiousness, which is what I'm not about and want to eliminate people. They start their own thing like, oh, this is our little clique. They get you cocky. Know, yeah, they get cocky, and they're like, we're better than them. We don't want to play with them or something. Or this yeah. and that. So what I want to do is overlap all genres. So thanks to Tom here, we got the craft beer crowd now. You know, like art, overlap with music, overlap that with film, overlap that with comedy, overlap that with performance, overlap that with craft beer. Bring a whole community together, let everyone do their thing. It's about, like, community, hardcore, like even look at Pittsburgh, man. Like people who are drinking the south side, going on the south side. You got your grocery store, you got all your bars, you got this, that. You're probably not going to go to Bloomfield. Everyone has their own little neighborhood. So I'm trying to get people, you know, literally make a huge thing where everyone starts going different places. And this beer is everywhere, different styles, brings people to different places they normally wouldn't go to. Everyone wins. And like you were saying before, I was glad you said the extra dollar. I don't mind spending an extra dollar for a beer. No. The best part is we price it at like what else is on tap. Six fifty, everyone wins. No one takes a hit. I get Nobody. the extra dollar. That's that's bar the still walking point. with like if they pour it ten ounce, they're getting like seven hundred plus profit. Oh, you're yeah. still selling what you're selling. I'm getting stuff to pay people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody so, eats, man. As, uh, again, yeah. it's reoccurring. If you're <laughs> if, uh, 101 eats, episodes, you know what I mean? Like feed the community. <laughs> it's true. If we said it for a hundred episodes beforehand, we're gonna probably say it for another hundred episodes afterwards, man. Support local, man. Um, it's that's, pretty dope what you guys what are doing. Local, local, local. Yeah. Can we can we talk You're about the concept it. of a six fifty beer? Because I don't think a lot of people understand that. I think a lot of people are used to budgeting five for a beer. Oh yeah, and just understand a six fifty beer. I get it now. Like I, I before would not have paid for it, but now I get it. Like you could go out and I, I can now go out and just drink beer some nights. You know what I mean? And not drink liquor. Like it doesn't have to be a supplementary thing. Yeah. Or I don't feel like drinking tonight, so I just drink beer because that's what happens to those five dollar beers. You get a Corona, or you get a Budweiser, or you real down bad. You get a Michelob. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happened is just getting sadder. That list yeah. every time is slumping. Uh, well, you you do realize how sad you look. Swinging up on the chick at a bar with a Michelob. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, what's poppin', kid? Like, yo, nah, what's I'm this? Not fucking with You're you. Like, I'm lobing it. <laughs> I'm lobing. You ain't in. But uh, yo, six fifty beer, man. That's not super expensive, and the quality of it so much better than anything you're gonna get. Yeah, for less. I mean, it's it's like you said, it's the quality, it's the variety. I mean, if you enjoy drinking things, there's a beer out there for your palate. You know what I mean, like Definitely. there's so there's such a wide range of things, you know, um, and again, it's heavier. You know, usually like you can get a heavier beer, mm-hmm. and you don't have to like you said go ham. Uh, you know, so did you, you say hams? You can go hams. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you, you, you can have like two good beers, two three beers, and you're you're there. And you're, and you're you know what I mean, as opposed to six seven five paps Coors Lights, yeah. and you're still you know passing a breathalyzer and just peeing a lot. <laughs> yeah, <Peeing>. just pissing <laughs> <laughs> nonstop like all night for sure. I don't want to quote that 650. Like, we work with a bar. Like, Belvedere's, all their beers on draft that are craft are six. So it's six there, you know? And like, well, I'm like, just saying 650 yeah, is yeah, a round yeah. figure. And again, for when, sure, you, for when sure. you start getting into craft, you do, after a while, like, at first you don't notice it. But then you start to notice, like, oh, shit, I'm paying more for beer. Mm-hmm. Like, so mm-hmm. it is it is a culture shock in that regard for people who are getting into it. But happy hour. Hey man, I'm I'm grown. I'm not just doing happy. <laughs> Sometimes I need to have a drink at eight o'clock. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not order Monday through Friday. Yeah, you know I'm a yeah, seven a.m. In traffic. I haven't done seven unless I'm on vacation. See, vacations I feel like you drink once you're awake. Like 
You eat breakfast and then you start drinking. Yeah, like, you ain't yeah. really concerned with lunch and all that shit. That you got solid a foundation. Ain't nobody, yeah. got, ain't nobody talking about lunch on a fucking vacation. You grab something to eat in the middle of the day, but you ain't having lunch. You drink. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> that's all you doing. Some chips. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I vacation wrong, but I be getting fucked up. And no, I go on like is. family vacations and I be like, look, I don't hey, know what the fuck y'all here hey, for. Hey, yo, man, well, I, as soon as I, I get off of work, I'm fucked up from then until I gotta be back in that <laughs> I gotta go day. pick up kids and shit and they be fucking that up. <laughs> Cause I be wanting to like smack a bowl in the car or something real quick, but then I'm like, damn, I walk in the Daycare, all hazy and shit. <laughs> Open the door. It's like uh, the beginning of a concert. All that yeah, smoke, all coming, smoke down. coming down. Your daughter's getting in the car. It's like, whoa, look at that rock star girl. Little like, kids whoa. catching contact. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like that's fine. Like, catch a little contact when you when you're a little kid. Just to let you know what mom and pops is doing in the other room. Like, we need to be honest with these children. Yeah, yeah, man. I feel a need to be honest with the children, man. Uh, but uh <laughs> <laughs> well at thus far I've opted not to go into daycare yeah, I, fucked up. Yeah. I yeah. feel like right before my daughter like her last day of daycare, I'm going in there super loud. Like I'm going in there. <laughs> I ain't even gonna pick her up neither. I'm just gonna go in and see how she doing at like lunchtime. Like, she all right? All right, and then I'm gonna just leave. <laughs> Because those workers, they be getting high. Like they they just gonna be jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I mean, they, all. yeah, yeah. I mean I, I think like you might need that at a, like a daycare. Oh, if you want to get a daycare, you definitely get high after work. All the <laughs> colors, there's like reds and blues. You're like, man, no this, fuck the this colors. Puzzle piece. Though. Kids, motherfucker. Have you ever walked into a daycare? I used to be a teacher, man. Man, Yo, yeah, we every got, crazy. Way, every teacher. like every every like elementary teacher that I know, every <laughs> elementary teacher that I know smokes fucking weed. Every what's, what's up? Damn, what's up? Every last one that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> every, reveal yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm, you were covert for so long. <laughs> oh shit. To get we start, fired real we quick. start talking to a soul. <laughs> if I say it out loud, you can't convict me. <laughs> That's What's true. Up? I will say you're talking times and drinking. The most interesting drinking crowd is the 6, 7 a.m. crowd. You got your nurses off work, and then you got mm. your hardcore Elkies. That's, and then you got your in-betweens. I think most people are dedicated to some sort of drug. I don't care what anybody says. You very rarely find a person that's a, not get dedicated to any drug. Any type you have of a stimulant vice or something. Of you, some sort. I, mean, I would consider advice. Like a, a vice drug. could be beating your dick in your car. That could be a vice. But you I'm might talking be. about drugs specific. Like you haven't most people have an escape. Like most yeah. people either smoke, snort, or drink. Like you're not I don't like anything that you shoot or up. Pop. Absolutely. Pop, yeah. Nah, yeah. yeah. Popping is yeah, I Shoot. Popping is a thing that I'm not. I haven't fully. Put I haven't really put my whole foot in the water. You know what I mean? Like I put my toe in the popping. Like all right, maybe that's cool, but I ain't put my whole foot in the popping. <laughs> so <shit>. beer, right? <laughs> <laughs> beer is cool. But Beer's on that, man, like, I like that you brought. God, that I'm up. in the wrong business, man. <laughs> no, you probably make more money if you sold drugs. Of course. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's that's understood. For sure, <laughs> selling for sure. drug like when alcohol was considered a drug and it was during prohibition, I feel like those people got super rich. Yeah, no, Capone. Man. like the Kennedy family, Capone. Like, mm. prohibition, like the money's from prohibition or some shit like that. What are these political families and what are these mm. families standing like all their money comes from prohibition? Yeah, oh, I mean, man. yeah, people, people new heavy. Yeah, super heavy. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of gang crime. Because you know? oh, drugs mm-hmm. are the most <laughs> like, yeah. consumed shit in the world. Yeah. Drugs are bigger than football in America. Like, think about that. Prescription. Well, yeah, I mean, well, they all started that, the they, they started like the war on drugs, and it's like, not a real the, war. Yeah, well, well, when they before they Profit. started the war on drugs, I think it was somewhere around like nine percent of the population, you know, used drugs on a regular basis. I mean, like at least was admitting it at that point. Yeah, it documented it. They've been using drugs yeah. since they was Native Americans, like and teepees and shit. Yeah, they, <laughs> they ayahuasca. <laughs> and they did. They did another like survey. You know, like twenty years into it, and it still was the same percentage yeah, of people. Yeah, it's not gonna go. It down. didn't do shit over a twenty year period of no. war on drug. You know, and I was watching a uh, Weed Kit. It's his uh, Vice Network show or whatever, and he go. You know, and they were interviewing these. Uh, um, Middle class, you know, white Americans that were looking like they they uh, had legalized weed and they sorted up these um, these shops, you know, all you know, well and good under you know under the book, but they have these forfeiture laws where they just like if you do any type of slight crime, like you know, your gate is too rusty, this lock, like you know, is is you know, breaks code, 
instead of like, you know, finding you or taking you to court, they're able to come into your home and take all of your fucking money and, and everything drugs. you own. No, no, every <laughs> like, like they no, didn't even they didn't even go to the shop. They went into their home and stole dildos and what? like went and threw her Assets. her her uh, kids like birthday cards and was stealing like cash out of the birthday cards and took their cars yeah, and like an TVs tradition. and shit like that Drugs. over some like minor infraction and it just like straight robbing motherfuckers. They uh they made like hundreds of millions of dollars in the last like couple of years just on forfeiture laws yeah. and because it's a civil uh thing you know I mean like a uh, thing you know there's no like rights it's not like well, they, it's they not don't even, even just that i think it's convicted I, of a crime there's they don't have any rights as a as a as a as a, uh, as a, a criminal it's all civil so like you have to just fight that shit 50 50 right yeah huh. i think they there's so little burden of proof on i guess obtaining those and saying it was used in the forfeiture of a crime that a lot of times you don't recoup that shit. Like it's just like it's gonna cost too much to fight it. They already got it. You know, gotta, yeah, they got it. It's prohibitively uh, like uh, I mean, you got to get a lawyer and all that yeah, other like, shit. Most like, people, man. most people dealing <laughs> with Appeal drugs, sell you out. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, 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 they took they like uh, like eighty thousand dollars off of this uh, family. Or whatever. They had like six uh, kids and shit. I've seen I've seen money taken off someone, like taken out of someone's safe deposit box. Like just they come if. That shit the is libertarian crazy. in me is like I'm cringing over here. I'm just like, oh yeah. yeah but this, man, this was bullshit. this was a result of the '80s and and, and Reagan and the you know the, you criminalize that down, consenting adults work. should be able to do as long as they ain't hurting anybody should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. It's, yeah, I feel you on that. As man. long as someone is not, if you want to do something, as long as you're not, as long as it's consensual, yeah, harm yeah, principle, consent, do consenting adults should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's that. No, there's no, my. Cool. Uh, there's my. Now. There's we're my Ron Paul. No, that's cool. Moment. I think we're all pro drugs to a certain. No, before we lose this. Before we lose this, I love what you said earlier. Before you know, we got to stay on drugs, that topic. But addiction, you mentioned vice. I want to switch that word vice into drive because you can switch that drug into creativity. You can switch it into other things. Whatever makes you do what you do that you need. You know what I mean? I think a small percentage of drug users are drug abusers and i think drug abuse uh, is a it's different all a, thing yeah. but i mean different there countries are, treat that differently too if you exactly. go to college and you learn that a lot of motherfuckers use drugs like and not even just people you going to school with doctors Your professors lawyers, motherfuckers it, providing the grant money like mm-hmm. they all smack in a bowl at some point like, so they're getting by i mean everybody needs some sort of you know relief and you don't get it as naturally as you used to back in the olden days when like all you did was like work and then come back yeah Home and you know what I mean chill the fuck and out. Like, the more money field. you get, the, yeah. <laughs> the better the the more money you get, the better the drugs. That's why coke is always like a fucking expensive drug because it gives you an intense high. It's really quick. <laughs> it gets over with. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers can work functionally off coke, which is weird. It sounds, but I, you know, I've never done coke. I'm not gonna do coke because I'm. It's just stigma <laughs> from where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, this is a whole stigma about coke. But then the more I hear about, it, I'm like, yo, that shit makes sense. Like you get a short little intense high, and then you just you get high for your lunch break and it just go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, that's kind of dope. Eat your lunch you don't have to shit. roll it. You don't have to break it down. You just yeah. put it on a table or I, yeah. a mirror or yeah. the I just, back I, of your phone. Yeah, I just can't. <laughs> just, I can't imagine just like the quantity and the versus the high of it. You know what I mean? Like it just economically for me, and that's why I guess it's for the rich folks because I can't imagine well, like the, spending sixty bucks for like an hour. The more of, money which, you get, like, I'm like the better the, the drugs. Mm, not more even conducive that, to what you're doing. I guess yeah. That conducive to what you're doing, the individual. I think it's it's all about free will and how you do it. You said there's abusers, there's that percentage, and there's people that like, you know, enhancement. I look at it as if you're hammering a nail into the wall. You know, that's something that you know, weed or whatever. You're more creative on it with Khalid, like tons of artists. You can either hit that nail on the wall with one fucking hit from that enhancement or you can bash up your hand all around it. it's all how you use it yeah yeah you yeah, know i, yeah, I, I mean, think there's there's uh, a, you know like you recreation said recreation or progress yeah i mean you can have a healthy relationship with most drugs you know sorry I mean? like, abuse or progress yeah you <laughs> mean like you can have a good relationship or an abusive relationship with most drugs it's you know it's moderation is the key to life you know i mean and if you are functional and you know it's not taking away from yourself your family you know i mean like you know and you're able to continue on happily in life 
there's there's no issues there. You know I mean like yeah, it's, it's when it becomes mind, a, body, soul. Yeah, you know, like and I think that you know whatever whatever drug of choice that you have, and I think in this country we do a a, a poor job of you know, handling abuse because when it becomes abusive, you don't have any route to take that won't, you know, lead to your, your, your downfall. Incarceration. Yeah. Whatever. You're going to be, you may go to jail for having that mm-hmm. in your system. You know what I mean, or, you know, yeah, yeah generally heavy. with abuse, the drug isn't the issue. And I think that's, we approach it as if the drug is the problem. It's, it's a crime. Somebody was, it's a, it's a crime to be an will. addict as opposed George. to like in other countries where they treat it as a mental health, like yeah. as a, as a, as like a, a health, disease. yeah, as a health problem. As a health issue, you know, like when you go to Amsterdam or whatever, you think it's going to be this fucking like city of like drugs and sex. I'm like, oh shit. But like they treat that shit like it, it's the yeah. most normal fucking place in the world. They just have titties mm-hmm. everywhere mm-hmm. and like people yeah. are happy as fuck. A titty and a it, day keeps the doctor. Away. Yeah, <laughs> like motherfuckers just say something like that. Facts. And it's clean as shit, but like they I think they, I got that on plate somewhere. I think <laughs> I got that on my mantle. Or... <laughs> I think that was Trump's ballot. Yeah. Fuck Trump. Trump. Trump's bound. Fuck Trump. What was uh, Pence's uh, running song? Every time he walked yeah, down, he says, "Running with the devil." Wasn't that that? Song? I don't even know if he Pence, is Pence Satan. didn't have his own signs, did he? I don't think Pence had anything. <laughs> I think Pence was just Pence. Cool, Pence like... has those signs. There was those burning crosses up in them yards. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe only good thing. This is getting that real. This is getting from that motherfucker being elected is all of us realizing how fuck that is to unite and do something and. Deroot the two party system and fucking do something. Third party, it. baby. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I'm, I'm seeing like a, a crazy split, and that's why I think if that's if he goes say, yeah. if he goes to eight years, it'll be because ah. there's a split. Uh, I just it's can't gonna see be, that far in the future. Say, when you say we all unite, that's going to be very difficult with Trump being president because I'm as a black person, I don't know how. I, I just don't know how to unite. With motherfuckers, because you always gonna no, be looking like you might have voted. Supporters. Yeah, you yeah. Because right. we tough. don't know who the Trump supporters. There's these hardcore Trump supporters. You see them now. They're like, coming out of the woodwork. Now they think it's this okay. They think to it's... win. So then you're gonna be looking like, well, who the fuck really voted for him? Like, yeah. As soon as he got elected, That's I pretty... had like five white people apologize. I'm like, okay, why did you come up to me? Yeah. And did you vote? Like, who the fuck just comes up and apologizes? One in one in four people. One in four people. Voted for Trump, and, and we don't know who did. Uh, You'll never know. Um, I You'll think never you know. know. You know a certain group of people who did. Yeah, there's some and obvious, can, and you can kind of guess. But there's some motherfuckers who be at work with you. Chilling. That's real cool with Yo, you. My mm-hmm. That fucking, voted for Yo, Trump. My fucking Our coworker came in. Of that. My fucking coworker came in and was like, "I never talk to people at my job. It's just not a thing that I do. Yeah, I don't yeah. really." Like to talk to them. I, you know, I'm here to do my job and I go home. You they're mean? acquaintances. Like I do it. Well, yeah, they're, they're not even really acquaintances. They're just people I work with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we have to work in the same <laughs> building. That doesn't mean we, we have to have. We apply to the same place. It's all we have yeah, in that's, common. Yeah, that's all we have in we common. Have similar interviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our qualifications are the same, but. <laughs> probably true. not. You probably. You probably yeah, yeah, we got a different you know I mean? <laughs> role here. You know what I mean? So, like, but like, for some reason, she felt that, like, she came in and, like, was like, oh, hey, you know, she's all awkward and shit. She came, hey, uh, yeah, and said some weird shit, and it was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that Hillary didn't win." I'm like, "What the fuck like, made you just out of nowhere?" Because, like, and it's not like it, it, she's one of those chicks that doesn't take up like visual cues. Like, I'm just looking down at my phone and shit, like trying to type away. Like, I'm busy, 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 can't get time to talk. And she's just like, "Yeah, man, I really do. What, what, I can't. Now I feel a little guilty though, because I don't know. I don't know what to expect now. It's like buyer's remorse. You know what I mean, like she was like, I, you know, because because it was like, oh fuck, we really did it. You know what I mean, like, yeah, it's 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 um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a weird situation. All I'm saying is, I'm walking around, I'm navigating Earth, not knowing who did what, and it's a strange time. Yeah. Like when 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 Obama beat Romney, I didn't really give a fuck if he mm-hmm. voted for Romney. It yeah, just didn't, didn't have yeah, that yeah. same yeah, like, nah. what the fuck. Like with Trump, if you told me you voted for Trump, I'm gonna feel some type of way. I'm I, like, I don't, I, I might not treat you terribly or anything like that, but I can't. It's only a certain level of cool we can yeah, be because I don't understand where that came from because yeah. nobody can really. <laughs> you're, understand. you're sitting across the bar from them, like, hey, send them a Michelob Ultra. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, we only Michelob. Yeah. Like, I don't give if on your birthday if I buy you a Michelob, I don't give a fuck about you. Like, <laughs> And he that's knows what we're doing now. the Trump supporters. They're getting all <laughs> Michelobes and natty ice. Send that motherfucker a Michelob. That's example of that. <laughs> that fucking election is like, that's, I hate politics, but like, you know, just well, like, the, that's to, a different thing. That's 
<laughs> to me, the el- election was more representative of America America or the actual true culture of America than anything else I've yeah. ever experienced. Uh, yeah. And it's it's just I think it's shocking because there is this air of progress that we had mm-hmm. or we felt for a we were going time. somewhere. And, yeah. it, and it feels mm-hmm. like a regression. Pat now. ourselves on the back. Was, yeah, we made it. Yeah, yeah, it was like a reminder. But like, all nah. the time, like we didn't realize that there's this segment of people. Who feel pushed away by people coming by together? Growth and, and, and diversity, and they then that's what ma- that's what's the most disturbing part about oh, no, it. No, 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 no. We do. <laughs> they made oh, it very clear. I'll, I'll Once keep... Obama came in, that eight years, it was eight years of a lot. Uh, yeah, of I've build never up seen a more disrespected more... like president. Yo, they went ham, and like, and that's the thing is that like you know, grow, you know, growing up and seeing that, you know, as a minority, like you see that. On a, on a regular basis, you know what I mean? Like, so we know it's there, but it's in coded speech. So, like, you know, for a while, it's like, is it really there? Because you don't hear it as much. Mm-hmm. And Trump, I mean, really, Trump did a fucking tremendous job uh, of, like you said, uncovering all that. Because now it's like, Appealing oh, to that like you, it's it's like you they can't deny it work. anymore. You know what nope. I mean? Like, you really can't deny it. Now it's just like, you got to choose sides. Is this... You know, like, are you on, is it, are you mm-hmm. for racism and, and bigotry and the whole this bubble? Or yeah, is you with me or what? <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's look tough. at PA, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, blue, everything else red. But I, I think that's why I said this election was more telling than any other event mm-hmm. that I've seen in history in my lifetime because most you're not like up until this election, I was not aware that that is how the country as a whole votes. It's that's largely good. red. Mm. There are small pockets of blue. They just happen to be more populated than the, the red. Major and cities that are people educated. in the more red situations aren't moved to vote as often. And he mobilized that vote. Because the Rust Belt, I don't feel like the demographic of vote changed. I felt like more people in this specific demographic voted. I don't feel like he said anything that made you feel like, oh, this presidency is going to be better for me. It's going to be like, yo, I feel what he's saying because fuck that other shit. So I'll vote. Yeah, that's how I feel. So, yeah, anyway, yeah, um, fuck it. You know, we're not fucked. We just gotta like we gotta move forward and and just make shit happen. And I mean, we gotta get out. Local politics matter. Yeah, uh, local politics matter. Know. White people don't be offended if Negroes aren't uh, <laughs> fucking with you. Just we don't know. Like we don't know who you voted for. Yeah, like some people are on edge. Like I don't yet. know, man. Yeah. You, mm. That one time we were sitting in the lunchroom, but you said that one thing, and now I'm like, what the fuck? Did you vote for Trump? <laughs> like walk around trying to be my friend. Now I'm hoping this never negatively mm. affects the craft brew industry. Like, but there's some cool shit happening in the craft brew yeah. industry. Like I, we were talking about some of the laws with a, with a gentleman. Um, have you seen a shift now that in Ugh. the city, because it's such a burgeoning um, industry here in the city, and I'm mm-hmm. assuming throughout the state it's burgeoning, have you seen any like regulations that have changed, that have adversely affected the we, business you do? We're helped? up big. Okay. Like, in Pittsburgh, we're up 20%. Or 20%. That's, that's big. I mean, yeah. I'm happy. However, there's a lot of change that just happened for a 12-pack to 6-pack for these distributors. Mm-hmm. One, I think that's going to suck for distributors because they you're all going to go out of business because it's going to be tough because they're going to be selling less beer, and I don't think they're ready for that, like making less money, less money, less right, money on every person that, that walks market. through the door. That's a different market. Of it's going to be tough, and I'm, I'm I feel bad because that's what they want, but I don't think they realize that. I don't know if that model can support all of these distributors. Okay. Yeah. So what's the what's the legislation like? What is it? It allows distributors yeah. just to now six packs sell six packs, and, if, and I'm like, sure on the back end of that, there's some fallout for. I've been selling less beer off premise, which you know, like distributors and Giant Eagles. I've been selling less there since that 12 pack law came in than I had when it was a case because it was everyone had to come in and get 24, and right. now they're buying 12. Yeah. Like they're like, you know, I'm gonna get 12 of this, I'm gonna get 12 of that. I don't need to buy a full case anymore. Yeah. So I've been selling less. Everyone's been selling less. Mm. And it's starting to creep up. And now I feel like it's going to be less again. Yeah. Right. It's I broken mean, down. It's like, it's like when the new hustler come to the block and he chop, he cut that, <laughs> he cut that a little more. Yeah. You know. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm I, like, I actually love 12-pack. 
Like because no, I, packs are great. I go it's in. It's a perfect number. Yeah, like yeah. If I'm going to just a give party, me one. give me one. Yeah, if I'm going <laughs> to a party or whatever, I'm gonna just go with that twelve pack, and I'm cool leaving. You know, whatever. I don't drink there afterwards or whatever. I go in with a case. You're like, I'm, I'm a I feel some type of way. That's yeah. thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Like six once pack you get above there. twenty bucks for <laughs> yeah. purchase, you want to yeah. see that entire investment actualized. Yeah. <laughs> the average American sets a cap at bullshit and at twenty dollars. Like, look, I'll bullshit a seventeen dollars six pack, and even then, like, if I spend Seventeen dollars for a sixer. I want those shits to be gone. But like, if I pay that's pit, that's Pittsburgh though. You gotta know you, you're from Ohio. Their their laws are so wonderful over there. And when you buy a six pack of beer at a bar, you're paying one six of that six pack price. It's beautiful over Can there. Can I just mm-hmm. be honest mm-hmm. with you? Uh, I've lived my entire life, adult life, in Pittsburgh. <sighs> so <laughs> I would you say know in Ohio, how beautiful Cleveland. I mean, uh, Cleveland. Uh, uh, I will Ohio say this about Cleveland: you could laws. always find a wino named Still Bill who'll get your liquor for you under age. So I don't know <laughs> if that's a derivative of the laws, but Still Bill. Went in there and he came out. He came out with that that half pint, that pint, and all yeah. he had to do was give him. Uh, <laughs> My cousin's from money. Cleveland. He's always no getting on. He's <laughs> always getting on me living out here in Pittsburgh. He's like your laws yeah. are oh, yeah. so. They are wacky. I, I live 15 Quaker minutes State from the border, oh. so <laughs> I can just like jump in real quick. And yeah, the laws here are definitely. You ever wacky. jumping out to Vintage States out the, that way, um, Boardman? You ever go out that way? I've I've been somewhere through Boardman. You got to go to Vintage States, man. It's sweet. It's 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 incredible. It's just wine, draft beer, bottles. Everything's fair. Good pizza too. Yeah, because yeah, in Ohio we fucking sell uh, liquor at CVS. Yeah, you get your, you, you get your you get Standard your drink, markup. which is your Plan A, then you hit the pharmacy and grab your Plan B, and you're Gucci. Get well. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. No, I think I like this it. is why we've turned. This is why I've become the villain and you the good guy. Because that's a day bracy thought. <laughs> it is the next hundred days as of today. <laughs> Truth. Man. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, the laws. Everybody took changing. The at the same time. That was funny. That was <laughs> yeah. that was incredible. Everybody, this fucking hundo is amazing. That was a pharmacy the, hundo, shit. the hundo has my heart. Yeah. I, well, I want I want to finish this growler. Oh, before, no, before I leave, it's not going to oh, be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I, we're on the same page. I will with be that, that like mom character. Be like, and I think the li- finish your hundo <laughs> before. <laughs> And don't get me wrong. I think that Living Color is a really good beer. Thank you. And I think yeah. people should definitely support that. Yes. You get a good beer. Well, it, you don't necessarily, it doesn't alter your night. Just just go out, get your drinking on, get you one to support the small business. You have It's a good beer. You can walk around with it. Cool. But that hundo just has a special place Thank for you. Thank you. Yeah. Just on that night, that night was majestic, man. Yeah. That shit was like unreal. Yeah, I, it was like unreal, man. And I was drinking shit that was made that I had something to do with it. Like that, that was dope as shit. Hundo is a very, 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 very good beer. That you should continue yeah, no, to I'm, I, 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 like I said, I mean, it, I can't tell you like how much people are raving about that they shit. I drank that. Shit I appreciate for, that. I drank that shit for a week straight and loved like every day, just for like I was just ah. Uh, ridiculous that i mean and it's a it's a great balance um that's that thing we were talking about before yeah yeah. balance is important in all things in life and in beer so what do you not tom because tom i feel like everybody i'll I'll shut up from now on they know you (laughs) so how do you balance your day job your music your entrepreneurial pursuits chris how do you like what do you do to balance that out or what do you do what do you do for your? And I think we should ask more people this. Yeah. What do you do for yourself? For sanity. Yeah, just to no, straight up. At first, it it was fucked. I was I made sure every job. I said I'm not working nine to five after college. He, I don't believe in industries this that and the other. But um, I was I drive Uber, Lyft, substitute teach. All of those jobs I can take off a month, a fucking year, and I still have my job without penalty. So I invested everything. I in believe that children are our future. The children. <laughs> the children. As of June, after the second art crawl, I've been straight art and music the whole time. So I'm full time now. I slept one day this year just because a friend from old school asked me to. Mm. So that's what's been going to. But you know, as that, as local, as local business, I'm working way more than nine to five every day to make that happen for the community. Yeah. You know, and it's grown, it's expanding, and that's for everyone. That's for you guys. You know, that's for them. It's bringing everyone along on the train. Because, you know, we talked the election, we talked the beer, this, that. The way we need this to start is on a local level to make a little mini revolution. Mm-hmm. Not in an uprising way, in a peaceful, mm-hmm. unity manner. 
local business, local beer, local grassroots, art, man, local everything. Grassroots yeah. is fucked. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I mean. That's what I said. Local, local progress. Just local, move progress. Local politics matter. Like I mean, everybody's looking at the presidency and like these, you know, high ups. Like you know, look at your your you know your older men or whatever. You know what I mean, like write your senators and your congressmen. Like mm-hmm. it, the thing that was crazy Better for me. Men, the thing that was crazy for me is that like everybody was like drain the swamp, but they ha- they reelected all the incumbents. You can't drain the swamp. You know mean so like mm-hmm. you know you're still on a local like on, on the top level you're like oh I want a different president, but you're still on your local level you're still hiring the same fucking people to do the same shit that you were pissed off about for the last fucking eight years. You know what I mean so you know it it it's it starts on a local level. You know what I mean like um and again. You know, not even just you know the the, the artist and the uh, the businesses or whatever, but like in politics. Um, you know, like I said, write your congressman, write your 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 uh, your senators. I mean, like you know, vote for, for sure, your for sure. vote vote every two years, man. Vote anytime there's a referendum. Yeah. Fine, I, you know what I mean, I, I gotta follow up on that. I'm so glad we somehow linked politics to beer, art, this and that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. I'm serious. Like as a teacher in public schools, I can tell you two facts right now. That's why it's fucked up. Schools are funded off property tax. If you're in the north side, if you're going to Perry, you're in a poverty-ridden area, that's your funding. Yeah, George Bush, No Child Left Behind, PSSA, if you don't hit a certain percentile, your school doesn't get funding. That's not No Child Left Behind. Like, oh, we're, we're not involved in the system. We want everyone at fifth grade to be at this standard. So all it does is increase the wealth gap. That's it. And then based on what you said, you know, there's a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that beer is kicking and I lost it. <laughs> but, no, it happens. Oh, that, that commercial yeah. break was brought to you by Hundo. Yeah. There we go. Hundo, That's delicious, eight point three. We would like to thank the sponsors Hundo. at Hot Cheetos. I brought that for you. Hundo, <laughs> Hundo, Hundo. He just, he hot Cheetos. Out, hope you're out there, sponsor. He just some hot Cheetos. Yeah, he did. Hundo, hit that, that crushable five and then forget about it. <laughs> I got you all some silver cups too from this. You take a silver cup. Nice. So wait, I, I need to I need to yeah, um I'm off topic. No, you're not off topic. <laughs> there yeah, are you're no so topics. I'm talking about Cheetos and so <laughs> I was gonna say well, I'm off topic. <laughs> it was a good one. This All of the topics drunk, are this off is topic. Drunken Friends podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is beer buddies or whatever we've been called. <laughs> You just lost you your own brand name there. Uh, no, you, we've been called all types of random These shit. Is beer buddies. <laughs> so I uh I, as most people who are listening to this podcast, uh we're wondering what's a day like with you being the sub, like what is what is that like? No, straight like up. how does that work? Do you give a fuck about the teachers? Uh, oh, the teachers time. fucking oh. like learning plan, or do you just go in and like I'm doing my own thing? But I'm gonna tell you something. Those I'm doing my own thing subs. They can at. either be the best sub or the worst sub, but. Mm. Generally, they're the Ooh. best sub. See, you know, I mean, I mean, but there's but there's also the sub that's like, look. This is what needs to be done. This is the yeah, lesson. Fuck that sub. Just get it done. You ain't. And then fuck I'm not off. trying to hear your we lesson. You here school. today and Tuesday. Get the fuck out of here. I want you to come <laughs> in. Implement your own game plan. Let's play bingo all day. Let's do fun subs. Everything you said is 100 percent right. And then as that sub that plays is, a, you know, I'm the best. Let's be real. I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, put that out there. But no, no, like He's no, the best no. Sub. We were all in high school. We all fucked with the sub. We mm-hmm. all disrespected it. It's whatever. So like knowing that going in as that shit kid, mm-hmm. um, like you gotta play it real. You have you to fuck, fuck with the yeah. sub because yeah. there's a reason you're just a sub, and it ain't because you want to be. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you, you fuck that. People, people. I don't understand why you would be a sub. Why would you uh, not just want to be a full time teacher unless you have something else going on? Then I get it. But as a student, if you're just coming in, taking the place of my teacher, no, nah, I'm not going to respect you. Because <laughs> no, you don't affect my grade this marking period. It like, depends. I've never gotten a lower grade because I fucked with the sub. Like, nobody gives a fuck. No, for sure. Like, I've been in one school three. If you have the respect, if you're there longer than two days, you know, then it matters. You know what I mean? And not even that. Like, my first day was a period I had no idea what I was getting into. And oh Perry! Yeah, it was yeah. Heavy I don't think call that a huh. Perry no more. It was <laughs> heavy. There was a thirty on thirty person fight in there. They needed to call fucking cops to fucking break up. Yeah, so but I you're play, the sub. You, you don't have hard. to do anything with that. No, but I mean, I, <laughs> I take it to heart. Time. I take it to heart. You gotta, I, you know what I mean? Nah, I never take a thirty don't. on thirty. No, I'm not. I wasn't there for <laughs> that's that. That's a conscious not, decision. Yeah. <laughs> if it's thirty on thirty, that needs to happen. That needs to. Y'all need to get that aggression out. So you take me. You put the skinny white guy in the middle. It's like, hey guys, let's treat each other well. 
No. no, no, no. <laughs> if it's 30 on 30, there's some deeply rooted neighborhood shit involved, and they got to work that out. That's Absolutely. beyond that's school. they adopted Oliver as well. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the school. Mm-hmm, that's them mm-hmm, dealing mm-hmm. with shit from five to whatever time they Absolutely. You don't want to get involved with and that. And the only reason I hit it hard is because I did exactly what you just said, because you're right. You got to not be like, oh, here's the sheet. Do it. Like, this is what we have to do. No, that never works. It's never going to work, and it hasn't. You got to be charismatic. Like, my first day there, of course, people were ripping me apart. You know, so like I instantly took a textbook, slammed it against the window. You break some shit. <laughs> you get people's attention. And then like, you know, I had the like, that's a heavy ass school. There's like people kill each other. It's insane. But yeah, like, I don't know if you should be going in slamming books. Now yeah, I think yeah, we have two yeah, different yeah. ideologies. Yeah, at that yeah, point. What I'm saying is like, then you get it, their attention, the people who are fucking with you. Then you're like, yo, read, do this, stand up on the desk, do something unorthodox. So they pay attention. Captain and then captain. Yeah, 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 straight up that. And then everyone who is, you know, messing with you at first, be like, oh, no, you're not in it. And then they want to be in it. Hmm. And then you bring them back. Like, I don't know. I'm all about unorthodox shit, and it's worked for me the whole time. Just do that outgoing, weird, extroverted shit, and then it works. If you're just like, oh, here's a sheet, nah. So that sounds like, you have you taken lessons from subbing to into the teaching? Because listening <laughs> to that, it's almost like, okay, I have this history of grabbing the attention of those who aren't necessarily here for me. You know what I mean? And that's a big thing in comedy where sometimes you you do shows and the people there aren't there to see you. They might be there to see their friend. They might be there to see a headliner. Yeah. They just might not know who the fuck you are. And they sometimes are it almost feels like you sub. gotta do something drastic to get people <laughs> to shut up and listen. Yeah. And then you bring the substance behind it. Has this been something that you've adapted with your performance? Absolutely. Or Absolutely. has the performance helped with the substitute both. teaching? Hand in hand. It's okay. all synthesis of both making each other. And then I'll go on record and lose my job again for the second time. Um, I have no credentials. Zero. I went for philosophy. Nobody Creative writing. You know. I know. That's, that's the reason I'm bringing it up, though. It, it's, there's a lot in public schools, heavier schools. It is like if you don't have a spine, if you can't stand up, no matter how smart you are, if you can't get across these people, it's not going to work. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and that's yeah. that you got to motivate. And like I have the privilege of getting very involved mm. and then being able to take a break without penalty. Mm. Like I totally respect the hell. Like I was like full time fourth grade for a year, jaded. Like being in there full time is heavy. Are you out? I think the... I think you're out, Chris. Oh, I can hear myself. Oh, no, no, he's good. Right. He's Gucci. <laughs> he's Gucci. I, I, teaching is a teaching is so important. Yeah, and it's and it's such a weird thing. Like I, I couldn't. I feel like teachers. It's it's. I feel fucked up because I have this super like high standard for teachers, and I know there's no way I could do it. I, I could. You know what I mean, like I yeah. couldn't. I walk, a bunch I, of strangers' I, kids, like. I'll be ready to wash my hands with my nephews you know, when they start acting You want to know what up. it like, is, though, about teaching? This. Like, fuck this. <laughs> when I was a teacher, you can fu- you got to take these kids that, that you said aren't yours. You have no prior, you know, like, relationship with. You got to mm. find them. You got to take them and say, I got to find something I like about this kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, people, the, some of these teachers. Which can like, be nothing with kids. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't yeah. even it's have a It's so hard. With- yeah. Yeah. But you got to say, like, like you got to find something you like about that kid be like, this kid sucks. He's mm-hmm. the worst. But there's something in there that's awesome. And those I'm gonna take that. And I'm gonna run with home it. situations yeah. every time. And and yeah. and, I, and I see a, a you know in the industry because like there's a lot of there's a lot of different teaching styles and reasons why people get into it and the whole nine and you know that affects like the relationship with various students and the system the whole nine. Um, I think there's a type of person and I've run into a lot of uh, you know that type. Like I, I started off secondary math education. You know, mm-hmm. so like, you know, I was in that 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 crowd for a little while and like they were uh there's there's a type that is just like that is that is kind of drawn to that field where it's just like it, it like like they have nurses. a bunch of tchotchke shit around their house, like to teach a child is to yeah. touch their heart forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh Yeah, like everybody's a snowflake in the whole nine, like and 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 I think this in in this country, we do not uh give credit to the education system. We gut it. Um, and I think a lot of what we're seeing now is a result of us gutting that uh, education system and uh, appropriating those same funds into, you know, uh, corporate welfare and, and, and the war machine. You know what I mean? Like, it's owned by institutions. Yeah. It is owned by corporations. So, you know, devil's test, this, that. Yeah, it's like, all standardized tests. It's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, so education it has taken a, a huge hit. And, I mean, teachers in, in general – 
don't make you know nearly enough to to keep afloat. Eleven thousand last year qualified for Medicaid. Hope Trump doesn't take that shit away. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. But I will say, if there's one important thing that I had to come to terms with after you get attached, you want to change things. Like my number one thing is change things for the better. Help out. Get involved. You cannot change something or someone outside of yourself. You can only show them the proper resources yeah. and the way to do it. You can lead. You can lead a horse. Me. And f- once again, fuck Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Like how in this Very day and so. age, anyone with a <laughs> conscious <laughs> mind, like black, white. Oriental, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like rugs, Oriental people. <laughs> people, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be. <laughs> right, okay, right, I'll just fuck you. Fuck yeah, right. You, fuck you. Yeah, I'm drunk. That's fine. That's the I've point been of up the all show. Night. I been, I <laughs> didn't, uh, you're doing it right. I'm doing. I'm making a sense as I was going to let the Oriental here ride because that's that. <laughs> it's my favorite flavor of ramen. Yeah, yeah, I was, that's <laughs> the one. <laughs> it does have a warm spot in the heart too. Like yeah. So I wasn't gonna. I'm sorry. My buddy's Fijian. He's like, yo, Tom. He's like, like he's like, I love your mom. Now like, she always dropping that Oriental thing. She's like, I love your friend P. I love that he's oh, such a nice Oriental young man. I'm yeah, like, I mean, people who don't know. See, ignorance is taking ignorance. a negative connotation. It's not super negative. It's it's just a lack of awareness, a lack of knowing. That's mm-hmm. that was always his thing. But it's like where ignorance goes sour is when you start to act on your lack of knowing, as if you know. And mm-hmm. then it's like, all right, use an ignorant motherfucker, like. Yeah. I'm ignorant to a lot of things. I'm ignorant to a lot of things that go with craft beer, you know what I mean? But I still do the podcast, but I, I'm willing to be open and learn. Yeah, and that's, I, mean? I think that's that just... separates you and, 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 and everybody in this room, you know, um, but is having that open-mindedness. Like, I was talking to a friend last night, and he was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a conservative, and, like, I'm right, but, like, I'm, like, the most progressive one that I know because, you know what I mean, like, I don't have this same, like, level of hatred or whatever. I was like, that's because you're a humanist, you know what I mean, and you're open-minded, you know, because left, right, whatever, like, there's leftists that are dogged and just, you know, I, I want to believe what I believe mm-hmm. and I don't want to, you know, I want to live in an echo chamber. And there's the same <laughs> thing on the right, you know what I mean, but, like, the people that are able to have those various views but still get along are the people that are open-minded and able to hear a conversation and continue that on and say, you know what? I may have been wrong. I think it's a lot to say, like I might have been looking at life the completely wrong way. Right. Because life is finite. As far as we know, you live it and you're gone Yeah, and you got the one shot and that's it. So it's hard to be like, ah, I've been fucking this up for so many decades. (laughs) Translate back to what we were talking about the whole time. Community, bring it down to our level. That's what it is. No pretentiousness, right? Overlap the local scene. Don't be, we're better than them. They're better mm-hmm. than them. That band's different style. Fuck them. Like it's all about. Why well, fuck exact, the band? <laughs> I thought you had a unity. positive message. Talk, no, I am. I, I am. I am. I'm saying that like eliminate pretentiousness based off what he said. Sense of community. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what Yo, I'm you're saying. You're a modern day community. hippie, and I love it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> we need more hippies in this life. <laughs> Like hippies kept shit back. Shout out, shout out, Levity, man. If Every, you wanna, if you wanna catch a hippie vibe, sh- go to Levity, drop in that motherfucker for like I mean an hour, yeah. or you yeah. know, as I did, a little longer than an hour or so. And <laughs> hippies are like central. They're they're fucking great for society because no matter where you are, polarized, you meet this hippie who don't give a fuck. It's and all it, gravy. It, it softens your view a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> What's like, up? All right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, but then hippies probably had they shit. They was like, yo, fuck that. But everything else is cool. Right. <laughs> everything else fuck is that cool. Is Trump. Fuck I don't Trump. wear yeah. socks. <laughs> <laughs> socks are outside of what I do. But everything else is cool. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to that that Oriental ramen you noodle gotta flavor. Let the Oriental bump go. up. I know I am. I am. What I'm saying, all I was making with that point is that everyone, it's based off merit, the individual, mm-hmm. and credibility. That's it. Yeah. The yeah. person. None yeah. of that shit. And hopefully one day we get to a point where that is the, the foundation. Yeah. Of the all country. I'm saying is beyond me how yeah. we are uh, not there. I'll yet. be dead and gone by the time that happens. Yeah. So we just keep. Isn't that a little depressing though? Yeah. No, because it. You know, we Chris Rock said it, and I thought it was funny and it was true. We are living in a society where white people are the nicest they've ever been. So yeah. I can't complain <laughs> yeah. that much yeah. because there was a time in history where things were worse. Yeah. So and, and 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 there's hope, and that's what 
that's what like I mean I do all my ranting or whatever but like I love this country like I I, I love America I love you know the, the progress that we have made um and I wouldn't be so angry and like outspoken if I thought it was hopeless you know I mean so right no you I know agree. um so looking in the future and like when you look at change change is oftentimes generational you know I mean, you might be yeah. working towards something that you will never see. You know what I mean, like, you know, but that's deep. It's I never thought worth about it that way. It, because well, we're doing like we right now where we're at right now is the hard work of a great many thousands and millions of people that have never seen it's cumulative. It. Yeah, it's cumulative. Right, right. You know what I mean, like, you know, a lot of people didn't make that's, it I to never see thought that. About that well, you know, you but you do it because you want this moment. Like, so like that, that thing that we're talking about. We put the time in, not just so we can see it, so that it can actually happen. Yeah, you if you're know? talking about that's morphing the foundation of a country, that's going to take more than a lifetime. Yeah, because you've exactly, had yeah. so many lifetimes that mm-hmm. this was the foundation. Yeah. It's going to take more than just you got to hand the ball off. Yeah, I mean, like, it's we ain't the going, baton. Yeah, you know yeah. so you give someone a better starting point. Boom. You know yeah. what I mean? That's Keep that's why going. people race for a pole position in NASCAR. You didn't think that's I watched that. <laughs> I, I didn't. <laughs> 101 <laughs> episodes? Oh yeah. This is fucking... definitely the Dalmatian episode. <laughs> ah, like, yes, yeah. I did. Because you definitely got some white spots in it. <laughs> no, that's not. Well, okay. <laughs> like the reverse. NASCAR is definitely the whitest. <laughs> We're this the white NASCAR is the whitest thing I've ever shown yeah, support of. Hell now, here's yeah. the thing. That's you know just some Johnny people Cash? driving fast. He's the whitest thing on the planet. I don't know anything about Johnny Cash. Exactly. I, I Keep it that way. Up until yeah. 74 episodes ago, he was a character on Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cash. Is that the name of the coyote on all those Looney Tunes? <laughs> What's that guy's name? <laughs> no, but um, yeah. man, I don't know what the fuck. This this podcast was super political. Yeah, it did. It got, I, it got I real fast. <laughs> well, really. you come on here too much. So it's almost I'm like sorry. Yeah, not you're... having our black conversation. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, because this is conversations that we have. We could talk about. Fairly often. We could talk about things, whatever you want to talk is, about. I, I think what's funny is in this country, race and small business, like small businesses, have a similar struggle to races in the fact that we we talk about promoting small businesses and small people business talk Saturday. about equality. Mm. People talk about diversity because it sounds good, but all of the legislation the and the enactment of legislation. Is kind of rooted in keeping those things subdued or elevating certain ones to make it seem like Mm -hmm. this shit can happen, but keeping the masses subdued. You know what I mean? Like when you're talking about moving to from selling uh, 12 packs to six packs, Uh that seems good. There's this. It's bad. There's this thing like, oh yeah, so now you can go here and get this, but then those micro 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 breweries that you know. Just build invested of thousands of dollars. They build off packs. of Sixers. Like this is what we do. Yeah. Not that I and know it's anything like, about oh, that. Oh, now, now Giant Eagle can sell a Sixer of Coors. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that kind of fucks me. Yeah. So you know, for every for every good thing, there is a negative. But I, I mean, would would that also give people? Because the thing is, is that like what what it did for me was it diversified my uh you know my experience because like i wouldn't pay like for a whole case but like with with the 12 pack like i'm more willing to give that a try yeah. as opposed to something new so with a six pack like i would def like go in get a six pack to try that and mm-hmm. if i liked it then i would definitely well, next time i go into a next time i go to a party grab You're the 12er you know what i mean because i had the six it's tough man it's hard to say i mean yeah, you I don't think it's going to be bad be. for mm. smaller breweries yeah. because they're going to be selling less and less and less. Yep. I mean, my my business is mostly draft driven. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I'll feel as much of a pinch as like a place that's like who maybe is out of state and most of their business is driven from off premise. Mm. So now they went from selling because I, I I was just talking with the guy from Oscar Blues, really nice guy. He's saying that they're they're up. Because they're selling more twelve packs, I, and I wonder how that would be for a smaller brewery. Oscar Blues is one of the biggest breweries in the country. Yeah, they have twelve packs already. They were all set. They're just yeah. like send them out, send them out, send them out. <laughs> yeah. and now they're just oh, twelve pack, twelve pack, twelve pack. And I'm thinking like those breweries who depend on selling that case. I want to sell that case. I want to sell that twelve pack. Now I'm selling less. Yeah, I, I wonder what that's going to end up being like. I got to interject before we lose this point, if that's cool. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, I don't think we've been off topic for one second talking politics, this, that, because this beer right here, the Living Keller, mm-hmm. that's about diversity. That's about bringing different people together. 
different styles of art, different genre, just different people in the same room intersecting. You know, oh, I like that. Now I'm going to check him out and follow him. Or mm-hmm. I like her. I'm going to follow that style of art. I'm going to, you know, be more open-minded to do that. And that open-mindedness, that's what we need to have. That's what you were talking about. That's what both of you guys were talking about. And that's what needs to happen for us to go forward. And if there's, you know, students, I, I give them two options sometime when I get pissed. I say you can either give up or push forward. Mm-hmm. And the latter is always better. But I'll end my rant there. <laughs> nice. You're sure now, what happens when up. you say that to a kid and he's like, yo, fuck you, teach. <laughs> like, you just gave up. <laughs> yeah, no, I, sh- I straight up, like, I shunned them. You just gave up. And I, make, I, and I tell everyone, I say, all right, all right, guys, it's time to shame Andre. And we go, shame. Shame. And there's 26 kids shaming him. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> that would be awesome. It's like Game of Thrones. Shame. Yeah. Shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shame. That would be awesome. That's like See, me when I take out the recycling leave, every so weekend. It's like, clink, 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 shame. Shame. Clink, 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 clink. My job is gone. <laughs> Retired. <laughs> so, uh, since your job is gone, then you need to push this. Where can they find you online, my friend? Red Fishbowl. Instagram. Facebook. Internet. And what we do Gotta is. Gotta get like this I guy said, better on Twitter, though. Twitter is where it's at. I fucking suck at Twitter. I, you, that is where it's at. You I love Twitter share. now. I'm gonna, I love, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna convert Twitter. him. I suck at Twitter. Facebook is definitely oh, a you. better space for me. <clears throat> her, her, and her. I don't know why, but I feel like I feel like so I thought of this the other day. Twitter is where I tell you what I'm thinking. Facebook is where I tell you what I'm doing. Twitter is ambivalent. Instagram is Facebook. where I document things that I've done. I like that. I've never thought about that way. And I, and I feel like Facebook's right. best for me because I'm willing to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm not always prone to just tweet everything that I'm thinking. So I feel like Facebook's the I best, had best for, space for me. I had a very unique, just yesterday, I had someone come up to me and they're like, you're Tom Marshall, aren't you? I'm like, what the fuck? I never knew your last name. Oh, Tom Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> I have the <laughs> whitest name in America, Thomas Poet Marshall the Third. Uh, the third, fuck, I didn't know uh, that. Poet is in your name? It's my name. Shit. It, so it, my my parents were not beatniks. I, my my great my, my grandfather. That's his name. Poet R. I. P. Is, Robert Williams. Poets were the first pimps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly were. Someone came up to me. They're like, "You're, you're Tom Marshall." And I'm like, "How the fuck do you know that?" My lady's been posting things on Facebook. She knew everything about me. I mean, she's like, <laughs> "She's like, I know you." Fixed Neither up your I house. Know. You got a French bulldog. You got a five year old, five month old baby. I'm like. Who oh, the fuck shit. are a you? Great. Uh, and I'm like, and I was upset. And that's Facebook, why that's why I hate Twitter. Facebook. That's why I'm not good at Twitter because I can't tell you everything I'm thinking. And I'm, I'm always think I have two small kids. So I, your thoughts are kid centric. And I don't I like that. lose so many followers on Twitter because I say the word cunt all the time. I, I go word. like, uh, I'm like uh, 400. Uh, 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 now we're going back up. Back cunt's down. a good word for me. Like, I'm just cunt. Isn't offensive. <sighs> it's it's a it's just a it's cunt. maple I, syrup I, on the pancakes of my I, life. I don't understand how you can call somebody a I bitch, use it, but not a cunt. I use it sparingly. Thick like and when rich. I use it, I I'm, it's for very you know why I very don't like cunty that? reasons. Like you have to really have you know earned why I don't like that, that though. Bone marrow. That's it's so intricate. American. That's a thing where no, motherfuckers it, will just take some shit and be like, all right, this is what that means. This is how <laughs> negative that is. Mm. People call people bitches all day. I've been in fucking well, it, with, groups of my friends. We've called each other nigga all day and you tell me I say the word cunt on the internet I say the word moist on stage see they moist the line they take they take all the fun words to say though that's what's fucked up about it is that like they are phonetically like they are fun Words like monkey and and bamboozle like monkey, they're they're, no. they're, they're, they're monkey, yeah, they, I can't like, fuck with that's that's my has, favorite word. Monkey yeah, there's has there's a so many fun words to say and you can't say them and that's what pisses me off because it's like. But yes. I can understand monkey. Oh. There, there, there Bulbous are there are like, visual <laughs> you know? depictions of where oh. monkey was used to oppress. I get that. Yeah. Who's been oppressed by cunt? Who's gone into a job well, interview I mean, I think and been like, women, Do you have maybe? cunt I mean, on your I'm... resume? <laughs> 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 yeah, Sarah, Wall we were thinking about cunt. hiring you, but here at the bottom, it has cunt. You were a cunt from 08 to 09? Oh, yes. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? Buzz, like, are you no, keeping that, that track of how many times we said cunt? <laughs> I, I, I want a track. That's good. Oh, I want to put that back into it. Let me tell you something. 
Oh, it's such if a you, wonderful word. If I was like, if I if Day and I were arguing, like, shut up, bitch, and we was joking, it would be okay. If me and my girl were arguing and I said, oh. shut up, bitch, I got to move out. And yeah. I don't understand. I mean it the same way. Like, it's fucked up. Once again, gentlemen, I'm going to interject. Let's just, well, we're using the bad words. Let's get into it. Gay. Faggot. Look at faggot what? more than gay. Oh, no, gay's no, 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 no. not terrible. But faggot's not cool. What you're talking about? Yeah, it's never. I, I, yeah. It scorches my skin. I agree, but, but all again, I'm there to say is, is a, connotation, just like you said. But there's a historic, mm-hmm. like story what? behind faggot where there was physical action. Like they were throwing faggots in the fire. Dude, like, dude, when you I mean, say faggot, it's much more incendiary than cunt. <laughs> what is a cunt? I'm a, I'm a, a cunt I'm a, is I do love Louis C.K.'s little don't sketch like. about that. He's like, man, that faggot All really made the like, shit on my coffee this morning. Right, but a cunt is and just somebody means, you don't yeah, like. <laughs> cunt? Yeah, oh yeah. my God. No, no, no. Absolutely. Like, look at the way the word gay changed from happy cunt to is this just to like, that. And then the. Mm. Flintstones will have Jelly a gay on the old toast. time. Nobody yeah. knows that gay means happy. Not though. even that. Like faggot uh, in the '90s used to mean just like, oh, that's dumb. What else? That's stupid. Nah, but again, British with faggot, six. the actual term mm. is such so more hatred. Incendiary. Like there's so much more hatred behind the term. It's that a cervix. Is what it is. Yeah, I can't necessarily say that for faggot. Gay. Yes, I. I will say the. Gay is a weird term for happy. I don't even before I knew what gay was, oh, I would never have said it meant the happy words like, like Flint I'm sounds gay. What the like that just seems, you know what I mean? But maybe it's because I was, you know, I don't know. But gay, like I could walk up to someone who's homosexual and say they're gay, and I don't think they would be uh, offended. My, right? No. But no, if I call no. him a faggot, like now nah, we got to well, fight. Yeah, and yeah, the worst yeah, thing fight, you could yeah. ever do in your life. Well, I think is fight I think he's saying like in the, the in the in the like chase, oh that's gay to mean that's no. bad type <laughs> thing. And I, I, I get that there. part, like you know, like you, you trying to to say like oh that, oh that's gay mean that's bad is a different than like well that's different. You're but gay, but like is, this video game, like Mortal Kombat. This video game is gay. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean tough. It's that's one yeah, of those weird like, things where you but, say it and it just depends it? on who you're around. Because I'm around certain people, like yo, that is what fucking I could gay. Like they won't feel any type of way. Are you what you gay or something? They won't feel no type of way. But then I understand where yeah, you can't say that. That's well, no, no, no. I'm talking about like I what, think it's all connotation and meaning. Straight up, how you yeah. use it, how you do it. Nope, that. because I feel like there is there are certain words that have just been deemed negative. Like what? cunt is a word that has been deemed negative. What is a cunt? Define cunt. Yeah, it's it, I don't. It, it's, it's a, a made bitch up word. That, oh, it's a bitch. It's a uh, bitch. That's what a cunt is with plus asshole plus just everything. One so good. cunt is, <laughs> is is a negative thing. It's there's a no negative racial thing. thing. It, it, there's just, nothing just, misogynistic it, about it. Yeah. But well, it's just I, a word I, that I has been the, deemed negative. I think it, it can. I, I think that. it has misogynistic how, how come Peter, I don't know the history of cunt, though. Yeah, no, how come Peter Dinklage can say cunt and I can't? That's what because, I want to know. <laughs> but I, I like for me, is. when it comes to words, like I am not going to use any word to describe you that you do not wish me to use to describe you. I, it's just yeah, There's so many fucking Fuck words in the dictionary. Fuck that. I, just know what I I'm want to use the word that I feel best describes you. And that's what I'm saying. But I've been In told that cunt can it. only be used at the on the most vile of people. But that, you yeah. might have just been being a cunt today, and I don't want to call people. I've never Aaron, called a person yeah, no, a cunt. I guess nobody. But wants I just to think it's cunt. weird so that, that cunt sense. is call a word. Now. That you yeah, like, say you it know now. what I mean? Like I don't. It has no historical. Unless I just, I may not be aware of it, but it just seems like a word that has no historical context. It just seems like a word that's meant to be used for people that you view in a negative yeah, light. If, if I, yeah, if like, <laughs> like given it's given it's given the fact that it is a highly incendiary word, just like many words are. If I use it, I know that there may be some sort of backlash that I had need to deal with, and I'm going yes. to but stick I'm by. But I'm using it at a person yeah. that I want that yeah. backlash. And, and I'm out if that action with you. If we're you're, coming, if you're we're willing to, you. <laughs> if you're willing, you a cunt? Like I don't. Trump feel is a cunt. You Seriously, back. you have no idea. I came here to talk about just the word cunt. I set you. I set you guys up. I set you guys up. That's all I wanted to talk about. So the whole Tom time. Poe wins. Oh uh, well, you've been on it too <laughs> many times. Like, I there's love no it. Linear focus. I know it's like, terrible. We just had a podcast of t- four people talking about shit. Yeah, nah, it's life. Like one of my favorites. Yeah, I like to just talk about shit. We just so had a bunch for of, all the listeners who have been with weird. us and all the listeners who are new, Dan and I have never actually called anyone a cunt on the podcast. Thank you. We're not pro the word. No. We are pro conversation on yeah. all things because all things can be discussed. Everything goes a little left sometimes, and it should. 
don't think it was very. Left. I just think it was a very. very uh, I think it was just open. I, I'm no, no, no. I mean, when I when I when, like I when I say left, I mean we go in the conversation that is not normal. On a, well, we yeah, covered I mean, we covered what they were doing. We covered exactly what they were doing, and we support what they're doing as far as uh, the living color. And the investment back in the small business slash entrepreneurship, yeah. entrepreneurship I, slash I think, uh, Listen, that was I my tie that, back because I, had to I bring feel it back. you. I think that <laughs> we're just circling. <laughs> I think that people should take conversations other places more often, and we could have more of this because oh, you know, the, the the superficial bullshit. I mean, we've had enough of that. Like, so shit what is we're real. Gonna, heard. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go break the seal. Cause oh. they just tried to pull his headphones off, and I stopped. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Said it first. Well, Dave's got to close the cast. <laughs> uh, Tom, tell us where they uh, where they can find you. <laughs> oh, down at um, jeez, man, fullpintbrewing dot com. Yeah, Full Pint Brewing on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the same thing. Man, jeez, find us down at Wildside Pub. Mm-hmm. Man, that's that's where you can find me personally there all the time. Yeah, come uh, visit Tom. Come visit me. Word. Yeah, I want to come and Dude. talk to you about many many things. <laughs> you heard Tom tonight. He come. wants to see you after eleven. Come and see us at the the brewery. The brewery is it's a quote Ed in the cut. In the cut. As he, yeah, as he it is in the so cut. eloquently said it the other day. He's like, man, I forgot how much you were in the cut. He came yeah. to pick up the barrel. Yeah, yeah, it's in the cut. Wild is side in, is 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 Wild right side's there. in yeah, it's very uh it it it's in it's in the thick of things. In the thick of things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But after while our brewery the brewery the I'm telling you, yeah, the brewery after our t- <laughs> <laughs> There's always that one story you get from a brewer about uh, some type of uh, grain bag coitus. Everyone's like, because it's soft. And yeah. away. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I don't want to associate that with my beverage. I don't mm. want to. I, I I have a I have a question. Uh, you know, I guess this will be the you know wrap up question or whatever for for both of you. Um, tell us, you know, one of your favorite beers and why. Start with that. You're the oh, <laughs> you're the, you're the oh, my, I, need, I need a minute. <laughs> I totally deferred. We can edit okay. This. My favorite. Each other off screen. If you're my favorite beer of all time mm. is uh, Dark Horse Plead the Fifth. Dark Horse Plead the Fifth. What is? Have that? you had it before? Oh, I so it is magic in a bottle. It is a fucking eleven plus percent yeah. imperial stout. It is so good. It is complex and easy to drink. It is it's the crushable Imperial eleven, style. if you will. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. I, I don't think people talk about it enough. I don't think people drink it enough. People, you guys don't even know what it is. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and it is so good. Yeah. And, and, uh, okay, I mean, is I, it, I love is it. Is anything like dragon's milk? I, I love dragon's. Dragon's milk. milk uh, I don't know. To me, the barrel aged thing is good mm. but the whole idea behind like the the um the plead the fifth is that it's a it's a part of a series of stouts they do a uh cream stout uh smoke stout um an oatmeal stout not in this order mind you mm. a blueberry stout and then they do the imperial so it's like one two three four five pleading the fifth <laughs> um <laughs> and that beer is just fucking everything to yeah. me i mean it's so good I can't say anything bad that's, about it. That's, every, yeah, that's, and it's like that's the one. That, every that's the one year that you to. have it, it's just as good. Wow. Complex, dark fruits, malty, roast, everything. That's, Drink some yeah, yeah, yeah. today. I'm going to put that on the list. <laughs> I just all came right, back all from right, right. All right. I don't know what the fuck's happening. What's, what's your favorite drink? Uh, I want to straight up betray you hardcore right now, Tom. Because oh, we're, <laughs> we're talking Get it. about it. Living Color is my favorite beer because it supports red yeah, fish. Yeah. That's the one. I, I love it, but I will say, I don't know how the fuck Green the Flash color. does it, but <laughs> West Coast, that high percent beers that I can slam and get fucked off real quick from. Hey, Green man, Flash, a Crushable 8. That is, yeah, no, we were talking about that Crushable 11 a few no, seconds ago. Victory Dirt Wolf, Living Color, uh, like that. that's up there. That's all up there. A Crushable 8 is every man's dream. Like, I don't have to treat you like a ten. You just what plug, about you? <laughs> you just plug for my me favorite and drink I'm between yeah, yeah. myself. Just in general. Well, in life it's gonna be Hennessy and apple juice. Like that's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> Did I hear favorite. a laugh out in the distance? I don't know. Like that's never ever gonna change. 
I'm trying to think about the my favorite. Are we grab. talking like Mott's? Are we talking like uh, straight like unfiltered press? Actually, simply uh, Apple. Simply Apple. Simply delicious. Apple. Simply makes some of the best juices. I Unbelievable. They're, they're fucking great. And then that simply Apple with some Hennessy. Oh my god, it's like it's it's heaven in a glass. But they don't know how to do it. They keep it simple. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite beer. It's hard for me to identify my favorite. You don't beer, even so, get beer. I'm, I mean, yeah. that, that's well, I have to. Like, it's a craft beer podcast, so everybody sure. knows a little bit. I will say this. A very a good IPA will be my go-to most times because I feel like- What type of IPA? Do you mean like a, a bitter, color. malty? <sighs> are we talking light malt, heavy malt, heavy bitterness? Like, not Are we talking heavy, citrusy? Not heavy on the bitter. Um, Aromatic? I can trend more to citrus or hops than anything okay. else. Those New England styles are- Just to let me know yeasty, that it's a beer. Yeah. But it's to me an like IPA kind of like like coat like the, they kind of wreck your palate in a different way. Mm. Like that yeast kind of bogs down your palate. We're to the point where I can't get as much out of it. Everyone's like, oh, it's so juicy?" If I hear that one word one time, like <laughs> that is that is what scrolled across a girl's butt in like the mid two thousands. <laughs> juicy, Ow! like fucking. I'm like, I don't think about IPAs as being juicy. I don't think about them as being juicy. Like what I think it's it's a good baseline for an beers. individual who's not pause super indoctrinated <laughs> to the craft industry wants to get introduced you mix or those or you're just oh. out and want to have a craft and not just have a shitty like mass produced beer. I think IPAs are are very safe and I and I'm still in the safe zone. Honestly, I, like I can't get out of the yeah, safe yeah. zone. I get you favorite. with that. One. I'll go IPA like if I'm just out chilling with some friends and I'm like. I don't want to get liquor drunk. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to be taking shots. Yeah. But I'm not trying to just be spending my money to go home. Yeah. So like I want I want this drive to be slightly illegal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right pretty, on the that's line. Pretty much line. where you are when you drink a craft. Like I want this shit to kind of be illegal. So we're circling back now. What about you? <laughs> oh, my favorite uh, yeah. beer. Um, <laughs> Living color. <laughs> That's right. I love that beer. Uh, I'm gonna fuck these Hundo. flaming hot. No, you don't even I, know. <laughs> I'm fucking these flaming hots up. Yeah, I um, what? yeah, no, um, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a real big fan of Hundo. Just like the history behind it, you know, the, all of it. You know, I mean, everything. It's one of those things that I'm gonna tell my grandchildren about. You know, what I mean, like, um, so there's that. Uh, and and, and and like, and, and I'm, I'm gonna be like 100 percent honest. Like, I started drinking craft brew. Um, like really kind of getting into it about like four years ago mm-hmm. and like one of the first like 12 packs like or, uh, cases that I, I, I got was like full pint and had is the variety and they had that perky bus and I was like this is when you tweeted that that was it. touching I was like man that, that is, is so like fun. that is like, so is, cool this is the best beer that. in the world like it, have you tasted it it tastes <laughs> like coffee like, <laughs> like this is crazy like this yeah, you know I mean that's the reason and, why these guys get into that shit and like to hear that coming back yeah like and to it's, have it's validation yeah to have to now be like you know like to have a beer named out like like with that like yeah. that brewery that sh- it, it's it's crazy man because i was just getting into comedy around the same time and like it you know with the hunter like it's just everything just lined up man so yeah, we appreciate no, you guys we definitely and appreciate i that. appreciate you i mean honestly thank you again for having me thank you for mentioning us talking about us having us oh, on you here guys are the shit yeah, you've been supportive. I appreciate from the you gate, guys man. very, That's very definitely much. Definitely true. We are the shit. So, have we gotten their uh, social medias? We've gotten their social we got medias. So we got to yeah. let the people know where to find us, Day. Uh, if you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partnerspod. You can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at partnerspod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, and, and Google, Google Play, Play under Drinking Partners. Hey, listen, thank you to our guests. We had Tom for Full Pint. We had Chris from wherever the fuck Chris is from <laughs> because we want him to kind of still have his job, but not necessarily. <laughs> it's we not red fish bowl. We're not, yeah, we're not 100% sure if we want him to work or not. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming for out. For your children. Um, as always, for your children. if you've been listening to 101 episodes, you know the slogan, Drinking Partners is the crew, Epicast is the family, and we out of here.